They say a rolling stone doesn't gather any moss. Well, this BMW 2002 isn't going to be rolling anytime soon, is it? So we're at the Lancaster Pride of Ownership section, so let's go and have a look at some of the fabulous cars that are being displayed here today. So this is a truly special MG Midget. It's an MG Midget 50th anniversary. Now I hear you cry, well, that can't be the case. There was an MGB 50th anniversary, but never a Midget. Well, there was one, and this is it. It was built to um, actually give to the employees on the um, M uh, MG line as part of the anniversary celebrations, but the guy that won it couldn't drive. So a few days after he won it, he actually sold it to a local dealer. It hasn't really been used much. In fact, it's got, wait for it, 176 miles on the clock. Now, it even smells like new. It's an absolute stunner. What a great car. What truly really is a one-off. So we've seen this Primera P10 before at the Festival of the Exceptional. Now this particular car belongs to Chris James and it's in stunning order. It's a P10 Primera Automatic. So this is the car that succeeded the Bluebird. Massive step forward from the Bluebird. Really gained popularity with the fleets. Great equipment levels and started to get the company some uh, traction and this car is in absolutely superb order it's a two litre gs as i mentioned before an automatic and uh, it was driven here to the show so you know it's not a, a trailer queen fabulous so this 1991 golf synchro or it's based on a golf synchro golf mark ii has had a little bit of fettling under the bonnet well more than a little bit of fettling as you can see and in actual fact from its 1.9 litre engine, it now produces, wait for it, 525 bhp and 622 newton metres of torque to all four wheels via a Quave six speed transmission. This is one quick car. So, this Fiesta XR2 belongs to James and it was featured on the Bangers and Cash programme. Everybody knows that, don't they? In actual fact, it's a really special car because he's got a hell of a, a backstory to this one about how the owner owned it some years ago and came to uh, to find it again so let's hand over to james now and get him to tell us exactly the story with this car so it was my first car um i had it in 1997 or so dad bought it for me um done 40,000 miles when we first got it it was absolutely immaculate i kept it for five years used it like everyone uses their first car right um Crashed it around, took it to school, took it to university, took it to my first job, eventually sold it for 500 pounds, which was oh, just, yeah. just all they were worth at the time, pleased to get it. Um, and then we found it again, 15 years after that, at Matthewson's auctions up in Yorkshire. But by chance? By purely by chance? Purely by chance. My brother's a car dealer, sells classic cars. He saw it online and said, right, we've got to go get it. So sent him up, he bid on it. Um, Sort of with the mandate really of pay whatever you've got to do to get it back um brought it back and had it about four years since then and how much work have you had to do because it wasn't like this it was almost scrap was it or? it was pretty good it was very okay. it was a real auction car so it was very shiny paint <laughs> okay mechanicals were horrible um suspension was horrible brakes were terrible so complete engine rebuild some paint work all new suspension new brakes a lot of detailing, just effort to get it to where it is now. Oh, it looks fabulous. Thank you very much for telling us about it. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you very much. Everybody loves a performance hatchback, and this is a 1987 Ford Escort RS Turbo with 132 yeah, brake horsepower on tap. That may not seem like a lot, but obviously, given cars were much lighter back in the day, then uh, it's pretty quick. Now, this car has yeah, to be seen to be believed in terms of the condition give you a shot there it's getting quite crowded here but look at the engine bay <clears throat> so pretty standard car but look underneath they've got fortunately got some mirrors I need to get down on my knees here and show you the um, underside of the car isn't that incredible this is an absolute stunner isn't it got the original or certainly maybe a recreation of the dealer Sticker in the back window with the original Bryan Brothers, the uh, Ford agent for Bristol. 
Yeah, that's the beauty, isn't it? So this Apple Maestro, yes, Apple Maestro, was uh, won by the current owner for uh, 20 pounds in a raffle back in June and he's used it extensively since then. Now, the interesting thing with the Apple Maestro is there's always a relationship between uh, Rover Group and Darrow Group that unfortunately unraveled and meant that the kits for vehicles that were due to be built in Bulgaria were actually returned. And then they were sold and produced by Apple and Ledbury, two separate companies. This is an Apple car, and we're gonna have a chat with the owner and get, uh, get to find out a bit more about it. Daniel, you've invested £20 in this car. Yeah. What, what's the story? Um, it was a Facebook group called Retro. I don't know if I'm swearing. Yeah, yeah, we'll <laughs> blank that bit out. Um, and uh, he does a raffle every week, and it's £20 to enter for a ticket to win a car. And I entered to win this Maestro, and I won it. And what was the reaction yeah. when you won it? You, you were just amazed? Yeah, yeah, I was amazed. Yeah, I didn't, I, I'd forgot I'd entered it, really, because I just entered it put it to the back of my head and then uh, I got the phone call well my dad actually got the phone call and he thought it was a scam because <laughs> he didn't know I'd entered to win it <laughs> but yeah and you but you've actually used it so I've seen this car around at the uh, BMC and Leyland show and others you've done it several thousand miles now, yeah you? yeah I've been using it for my everyday car since I got it in the beginning of June took it to some car shows and done 6,000 miles in it since I won it wow and, uh, since June yeah. That yeah. is incredible, isn't it? Well, yeah. uh, have you done much to it mechanically since you've I've had put it? Or? A water pump and a rear wheel bearing, and apart from that, it's been absolutely bulletproof. Well, that sounds like a good yeah. £20 investment. Yeah. Well, yeah. Th thanks for talking to us yeah, about no it. Problem. Much appreciated. Yeah. Thank you. Back in 1992, Potter's Radiators of Chelmsford, yes, that well known uh, corporate, purchased two identical Metro vans, probably some of the last Metros to be registered on a J-plate. Now, when the owners of the business actually retired, they took the cars with them. And this one's very low mileage. I think something about 19,000 miles. It's absolutely superb inside. Fabulous, fabulous condition here. I think even the load space you wouldn't recognize as being uh, used as a van. It's been sparingly used and it's in fabulous order. So this is a Morris Ital. In fact, the last car to wear the Morris nameplate. Yeah. So, in actual fact, it really was a bit more of a makeover of a marina rather than a whole new model. And the Ital design coming from the design studio, when in actual fact, um, supposedly, a lot of the design work was actually done by the uh, uh, recently departed Harris Mann of TR7 and Allegro fame. This one's in lovely order. A bit of a reflection here, be able to see that, uh, that trim's worth looking at, isn't it? And let's just uh, go past the, the back of the car. And it's got those redesigned rear lights that came with the Ital. Lovely to see that. So this Citroen DS convertible or decapitable or something like this. Oh, I can't do the French, sorry about that. I'll put it in the comments. I'm not sure if this was actually, um, it's a right hand drive car. I wasn't aware these came to the UK. If it's conversion, it's been extremely well done. It is an absolute stunner. Oh, I'd love to take that one home. That's beautiful. So a Honda Accord Aero Deck. Now the Grand Theft Auto's got one of these on his channel, which he's restoring. So uh, shout out to him. He's done some magnificent metal work on that one. Hoping to get it back into its uh, rightful shape. Great, what's not to like about that? Two door, reasonably sized car pop-up lights get those in shot there and it's in absolutely stunning condition this car wow you just really don't see these very often and look at that sort of semi glass roof built into the tailgate what an unusual shape that is and what an unusual car it is lovely this three owner Vauxhall Tigris had a costed life not many survived as well as this I think the owner's the third bought it from the second owner when she stopped driving it's in stunning order you've got the original purchase invoice £10,341 apparently um, originally supplied through Motability uh, the owner I think was 75 at the time and then sold to the second owner who's since stopped driving it's in lovely condition this car has been filmed and driven on the uh, once driven uh, Forever Smitten channel uh, with Dougie 
lovely um, glass back on those, really was competing very heavily against the Ford Puma at the time, and, uh, but, but far rarer to see one of these. So celebrating its 70th anniversary is this lovely Riley Pathfinder. Now one of these was used as the, as the car by the lead role in uh, The Chief, uh, played by Tim, uh, the late Tim Piggott Smith. Never did find that car again. If you know where that car is today, then let me know. It's a stunning order now. Um, the design, the designer took some of those styling cues. So look at the, how the door handles incorporated into the top of the door there. Um, it's an absolutely stunning car inside. Got a, a bench seat there. Difficult to believe it's uh, a 70 year old design. Look where the gear change is. That's incredible, isn't it? What a lovely, lovely car. Beautiful design. And just if we look at the style at the back now, Joe Palmo designed this, also designed the MG Magnet and the uh, Jowett Jupiter as well. So obviously he got a thing about that shape, hadn't he? So Steph's just talking about Tina the Marina, which is behind us, which is certainly looking a lot better than some of those early videos that were a bit soul destroying with the, uh, with the rust on it. Very early Marina and uh, they've done a massive amount of work on it. So check that out on Steph's um, iDrive uh, a classic channel. Also, despite a few challenges, is uh, Ian from Hubnuts uh, Citroen GS from 1986. Fortunately, made it here without uh, without event, with a bit of luck, and looking resplendent in its black with the uh, red coach stripe on it. And despite some furious last-minute welding, Matt's relatively rare 200 VI has also made it to the show, despite um, all efforts to uh, thwart his attempts. It's made it safely here. So uh, check out that one. So I'm not sure whether you buy this for the registration number, but we're moving quickly onwards. M25 Classics have got this Datsun 260C from 1975. What a survivor it is. Yes, it could do with a little bit of paintwork. Maybe that would buff out, I don't know. Maybe not but it looks like a true unmolested original survivor. So if you're in the market, give M25 Classics a ring and I'm sure they'd be delighted to help you. If you fancy a project that's a bit more challenging, how about this BMW 2002? Um, it could be argued, somebody just pointed out the aerial's in good condition, well that's right. I think it's only the moss that's holding it together. Is this more than a VIN plate? What can be done with it? I would love to see the restoration on this one. I reckon Wheeler Dealers could bring this one back to life. What do you think? My God, that's got a very long way to go, hasn't it? So if the uh, BMW is not ambitious enough, here's a Rover 10 that, that comes with its own barn. Yeah, that's going to require a fair bit of fettling. That's definitely not going to polish out. You'll be breaking out the welder for that one. And in fact, it even comes with its own internal garden. That's lovely, isn't it? So as the 60th um, anniversary of the Triumph 2000 approaches, some of you might have recognized this car from Practical Classics. It is the oldest known pre-production Triumph 2000 Best part of 60 years old, commission number MB1 apparently, some identification marks and the original glass distinguish it from later cars. And uh, the club is going to restore this from what I understand. So big old job they've got on, but great that they found it. This is a rare one, sold in the UK as the Mark 1 Vauxhall Astra and here this is the Opel Cadet version. Left hand drive car, looks like the SR trim level, it's got the uh, lovely Recaro seats in there. It's in splendid condition, isn't it? It's obviously come from uh, a climate far more conducive than the UK's. That's lovely, isn't it? So this was a joint venture between Ford and Mazda. At one stage, uh, Ford owned a stake of up to about, I think, 15, 20% of Mazda. So um, this particular car I'm gonna pick out, it's in Boysenberry. Uh, they were built on the um, same um, platform as the MX-6. 
Uh, this one in Boysenberry is a beautiful 12,000 mile uh, example from new, absolutely stunning condition. Again, you know, not really appreciated yet. Love those pop-up lights that the probe's got um, in a two liter or 2.5 liter form. We've got the red one there. So shout out to the probe owners club who've been telling me about the cars, which is super. Resplendent in jewel violet is this Monty edition Escort Cosworth, built I think on a shortened platform from the um, Sierra um, RS Cosworth. Um, these were built to commemorate from Francis Delacroix's victory in the Monty. This particular uh, colour is a relatively rare one. I think it's jewel, jewel violet or something like that. I'll try and put that on the screen if I can find it, but uh, it looks amazing, doesn't it? So especially for Capri fans, the run out 280. So uh, these are extremely cherished these days. There's a couple of them on the Capri 280 group. They've even got their own group, so shout out to those guys as well. Um, if you've got a 280, that's the group to be in, isn't it? So this is a relatively low mileage, lovely looking uh, Fiesta Mark 1. I guess that might be what Sunburst Red, I'm not sure about that. It's got the um, facelift bumpers, the larger bumpers. I think this is a car that where the owner had uh, would sort of uh, spent her time between the UK and Australia. I remember talking to the guy at Ford Fest. So if you've not seen my uh, Ford videos, check out uh, Ford Fest and the Ford Nationals where uh, we cover some of these cars in more detail, but it is in beautiful condition. Now these are the rarest of the rare. It's the run out version of the Escort Mark II available in silver and I believe white. It's the Escort Harrier. Now uh, these were incredible, incredibly popular cars. They built in low numbers. I can't remember the exact number, but I did film again one of these at the um, uh, Ford uh, Festival in the summer. Beautifully restored car, isn't it? Isn't this lovely? It's a Mark 1 Ford Granada 3 litre XL in Olympic blue. I think it's been in the same family since 1976. Um, so almost since new I would guess it's in lovely order it's had some uh, bit of body work on it as I guess you'd expect from a, a car of this age absolutely absolutely lovely isn't it yeah that's probably one of the ones I'd love to take home with me or if you prefer we can get you a Granada Coupe now my understanding is with the Granada Coupe there were two designs of uh, coupe where there was a difference in this rear window rear pillar design i'll have to try and cut something in if i can find it now crayford built a thriving business based on chopping off the roofs of standard production cars and turning them into convertibles and this is a ford xr2 mark one so let's just take a look inside this car it's really well done and they called it the xr2 Fly. No, I'm definitely not kidding. It is called the Fly. And uh, this one's absolutely resplendent in what would that be? Sunburst red? I don't know. Put it in the comments if you know. So back in 1966, soup company Heinz commissioned Crayford to build a limited run of these um, Woolsey Hornets. At 57 to be precise. And this is one of those cars that survived. I can't imagine there are too many left, but uh, a really rare beast. This uh, conversion of the Woolsey Hornet wasn't actually offered commercially. As I understand, it was only available uh, for um, winners of the uh, competition. And also Crayford produced this lovely Mark V. Obviously a two-door Mark V is a rare beast anyway, but a Crayford convertible uh, is even rarer. Inviting us to make the most of the fine weather um, by selling us a Ford Corsair convertible. That looks amazing, doesn't it? Wow, that's a hell of a colour scheme, isn't it? Look at that. You wouldn't lose that one in the car park, would you? Beautiful. Now, the Corsair had a very short lifespan, being pretty much eradicated when the Cortina came along. This one is probably super rare. It's a GT. Um, but also, it's a two-door. I don't recall seeing too many two-door uh, 
Corsairs, full stop period. Now, Abbots of Farnham were famed coach builders and their stock in trade was converting normal sedans into estates or wagons, and this is their version <laughs> of the Corsair. I didn't even think one of these actually exists, but uh, this is it, and doesn't it look lovely? So another car that was pretty much eradicated by the arrival of the Cortina was the Consul Classic. Um, clearly American influence styling, looking at the stars on the grille, that badge, and then the twin headlamp treatment. And also you'll notice here, a bit like the Angler, it's got that sort of slung back, canted back rear screen and look at those fins on the back. So it really was a nod to American styling, but I understand it just had a relatively short life of maybe just a couple of years. Unlike the um, classic Capri, which actually ran on for a little bit longer. Now this is a lovely, lovely coupe. I've seen a, a version of this, somebody sort of uh, converted to a sort of Lotus, period Lotus version, something they didn't do. But it's beautiful inside. Look how low set those dials are. The amps, the revs, and the oil pressure really low down on the dash. Not sure how accessible they'd be. And I think that strip speedo. But it's, it's a lovely car, isn't it? What a beauty. And there's a few of them here today, so shout out to the, um, the club. And uh, a gratuitous mention to that beautiful um, white over yellow one just over there. Now I must confess to having some sort of obsession with the Mark II Granada, um, what lovely cars. I particularly like the models lower down the range with the steel wheels, this one with the trims, I guess it's probably a GL, um, replaced the Mark I Granada. I think under the skin, mechanically, I don't think there were a huge amount of uh, changes, but um, great to see that here today. Now, far rarer than any Mark 1 XR2 is the 1300 Super Sport, which was available in a number of colours. We've got a few of them here. We've got the silver one. We've got, what, red? We've got the black one there. And we've got the silver one with a Burton engine just over there. So it's getting a bit crowded here now at the moment. Let's try and get a picture of that one here from the corner. Um, just 3,000 units were produced of these. So um, special interior trim, uh, exterior body colours there was a choice of, but absolutely great to see them here. At the height of lockdown, one of these sold for an unbelievable £24,000 at Anglia Car Auctions. So this facelift XR 4x4 is a little bit special, aren't they all? And this one's got the twin turbo setup on it. And guess what it produces? It's got a picture of the dyno graph on the side. So should we have a look together and just see what it, what it made on the dyno? Yeah. It made 516.9 horsepower. Wow. That's something else, isn't it? Just looking like it's come off the set of the professionals is this fabulous... RS2000, not sure if it's a custom or not, the custom got some additional equipment inside and the non-custom cars are far rarer, I don't think it was a huge amount, this has got the old fishnet Recaros and it looks Im absolutely immense doesn't it? So this November 73 Capri Mark 1 RS3100 was one of just 250 UK cars built, I think as part of the homologation for um, touring car racing. This one was registered, uh, we've got a disc in December 74. It's got that unusual and, well, let's try and get a better shot of that. Look at the size of the spoiler on that. That would make uh, boy racers uh, jealous, wouldn't it? That's immense. Absolutely, what an immense looking car. So the Mark II Cortina benefited from more transatlantic styling, uh, I think courtesy of Roy Haynes, who went on eventually to work for BMC. This is, looks like a Crayford conversion. The, it's got the Lotus twin cam, so the uh, Lotus did continue in the Mark II. 
lovely conversion here that they've done with the car. Soft top motoring, but a bit of performance. Looks absolutely amazing, doesn't it? So Basil Green Motors in South Africa um, introduced this Mark II so-called Piranha and the recipe for Piranha was a bit similar to what um, was done by Jeff Urin in the UK by dropping a larger engine in, replacing the four-cylinder engine with a V6 Essex unit. Um, this one was imported, I think, or found in 2019. It's had a few modifications, let's say, that uh, might need uh, fixing up, um, but it's uh, it's got potential isn't it absolutely has now we all love a mark one cortina and this one's a two owner car with wait for it 222,000 miles on the clock it's won absolutely loads of awards i mean just look under the bonnet i'd be happy if my bodywork on my car was as as good as that one it's absolutely stunning isn't it stunning So Ford almost had a riot on its hands when it tried to replace the 105E Anglia with the Escort. In fact, the Escort Mark I was originally slated to be called the Anglia. It wasn't in the end, but so popular and so well regarded was the 105E Anglia that uh, it took out full page advertisements to explain why it was doing it. Can't imagine that these days, can you? This one's in lovely order. It's a super, it's a D 65, built in 65 in spruce green with an ermine white roof or so it says there that's the benefit of being able to read the cards on the vehicles so for Harry Potter fans needing a bit more room why not get yourself a Ford Anglia estate car or or two come to that matter so the Ford Cortina Mark V was really only um, an update of the Mark IV to be honest with you it brought with it the wraparound lights front and back uh, and some changes in trim but that was about it um, in fact the Mark 5's are easier to find than the Mark 4's we'll try and have a walk down this row and see if we can find a Mark 4 it's getting quite busy here now so bear with us so this Ford console's got a bit of a unique feature but we need to have a look around the back to just uh, explain that to you it's got this extended rear deck on built for cars that were going to be exported to South Africa to house a separate spare wheel so the car the South African cars had two spare wheels one inside the car one external one I guess to cope with rough road conditions and look at this deck that's been built on the back like some American cars of the period limited numbers built and I think out of the 10 built I think just two survive this baby blue Zephyr 6 convertible actually is got to be way up there with uh, one of my favorite cars of the show doesn't it look sort of 50s chic styling you've got space there for four maybe even five adults there you've got a column gear change maybe you could fit three on the front seat and maybe two or three on the back seat doesn't it look absolutely stunning in that color that baby blue color that cream interior white wall tires what's not to like it so we're here on the Honda S800 Sports Car Club and they've got some immense cars. Well, they're, they're, they're small. They really are small. I mean, how we, we got inside cars like this, it, it just uh, looks like it uh, could be a sort of car that you um, can pick up with a friend and move it, possibly. So this started life as a normal Toyota Supra from 1993. It's had an awful lot of work. It's got a lovely Castrol livery, hasn't it? This is the livery that the guys ran with in rallying, that Toyota ran with, when they were successful in rallying back in the day. The spoiler, well, you know, the spoiler uh, may well need planning permission looking at the size of it. That's quite a car, isn't it? Well, I can honestly say I've not seen so many Nissan 300Cs. Look like original UK cars, right-hand drive. Quite a brave choice back in the day. This is the, I think, the Y30 generation car and you know we can bookend it we've got the um, y31 cedric i don't think that generation actually came to the uk i think the y30s did but maybe not the 31s great to see those here today aren't they so it says pretty in pink and aren't they wow so of its time 
is the Vauxhall PA Cresta and I think the um, underneath it is the Velox. We've got some lovely features on here. Look at that symbol on the Vauxhall symbol on the grille. Um, we've got the slanted wraparound front windscreen there. We've also got the same with a wraparound rear windscreen here going on. We've got tail fins going on as well. And we've also got lovely features like look how the handle is built in to the top of, of the door frame. Certainly it is absolutely an incredible car and so of its period you would know immediately that was a car from the 50s. So if you don't like that shade of uh, pink and white, can I interest you in that one? Yeah, I think that's probably a Velox rather than a, a Crest. A Crest, I think, was the Highline product. Still got the same stunning styling features. And, and my God, we've got yet another uh, pink one here as well. Wow. That's quite a collection, isn't it? So this is a Simca 1500. Now Simca had an interesting uh, history. Originally they built Fiat's under license, then became uh, an entity of their own. Um, eventually Fiat took a larger ownership. Then they were bought by Chrysler of the US. And then finally, uh, through the sale of Chrysler's European operations to Peugeot Citroen, some of their product became rebadged to Talbot. Now this 1500 we're looking at it's got some lovely lovely features on it so just had a chat with the owner guy so shout out to uh, guy on that one um i think introduced in this i think he said 63 but it's got this uh split tailgate at the back and i'll i'll cut in some footage here of the uh, tailgate operating with this uh, handle here and the other thing worth mentioning it is that um the boot floor also doubles up as a picnic table. Yeah, that's the boot floor there. So, you know, you suddenly fancy an impromptu picnic, and, and don't we all? You've got the boot floor folds out, and there's the evidence to show you. You put your hamper, get your sandwiches out, get the tea on, and you've cracked it. So looking like it's been just been dragged up from uh, from the same depth as the Titanic is this Panard Dyna Z. Now Panard was a brand that was eventually bought out by Citroen and uh, Citroen took on some of their styling um, cues. This particular car has been put on the road by Tasty Classic so check it out on his channel. Um, Good job it doesn't need an MOT, I suppose, isn't it really? Because it uh, might still need a little bit of welding. It was in a barn for... Uh, 48 years and that's how it looks so it looks like everybody had had a bash at it that's some of the other pictures of it and uh, Tasty Classics um, YouTube channel bought the car and they put it back on the road and you can't knock anybody for doing that you know it might need a might need a bit more paint but uh, it would have been very easy to scrap it and part it out but he didn't he put it back on the road and well done to him for that so this is a rare one, built by a German Renault dealer, Wolfgang Panhenrich, I'm sure I've got that wrong. It is a convertible Alpine or Renault Alpine GTA. I've never seen one. Interesting because it's a composite body. Um, I think it's composite body on this one. And only believed to be something like 20 of these were ever done. Wow. So at one time, cheap insurance had made these Citroen Saxo VTRs and VTSs almost like street furniture, to be honest with you. This one's in superb condition. So uh, you have the chance to see a, a longer review, of driving review of this car on the Mark on Motoring channel. So check out uh, Mark's channel where he uh, has an opportunity to explain in a bit more detail what he likes about the Saxo. And there's a lot to like about it. So designed by Robert Opron, who went on to design many things, I think including the Renault Frego and the Citroen GS, is the Citroen SM. It's got the Maserati engine because of the ownership of Maserati by Citroen at the time. It's got the full um, hydraulics. These are absolutely stunning cars. This is a 1972 
left-hand drive car in lovely condition. There isn't a lot that I don't like about those. I would absolutely love to have a go in one of those. I'm not sure whether it would be a disappointment or not. I doubt it would. But if you've got a Citroen SM and you uh, want to see it on the channel, feel free to drop me a line, please. So you're never quite sure at this show what's around the next corner. And here we've got a Renault 12. So um, this car had a, a longer shelf life because the 12 went on to become a, a Datsun model in Romania. But these were um, good sized family cars back in the day. It's amazing how well this particular car has survived. It's in stunning, stunning order, isn't it? It's a 7512TL, what would TL make it? Probably towards the bottom of the range. Great to see that. A Renault 4, I hear you cry. You're showing us a Renault 4, well I am, but the reason I'm showing this one to you, this has got a bit cut out of the back. It's not just a Renault 4, but it's a Renault 4 pickup. I don't think I've ever seen a Renault 4 pickup. I'm assuming it looks very factory. Um, but if this is your Renault 4 pickup or you know a bit more about it then feel free to drop it in the comments it's lovely so the Renault 16 is credited to have been one of the first ever hatchbacks and if you look at the front styling the styling also supposedly influenced the later Megane particularly the front of the car you can imagine that the soft ride of this car um, it's a good sized passenger area on this one and how useful would it be to have a hatchback now this is a right hand drive car so it's probably a UK car I guess what 7071 on a J plate great to see these here you see them very seldom celebrating an unbelievable 40 years since launch is what I believe is one of the pretty small cars ever made certainly one of the pretty small Peugeots it's the Peugeot 205 and these look super that styling really has stood the test of time so there's the five door version for comparison we've also got the uh, three door this is a 205 xs i think i've seen this car before it's the tu engine i think that's called the suitcase engine with the gears underneath and this is an xs far far rarer than a, a gti lovely so hc classics in wiltshire have created this fabulous recreation of a 504 coupe brake or 504 uh, estate uh, coupe estate there was an original produced i'm not sure if it survived but they've actually recreated this faithfully to the original design and doesn't it look great there's actually a decent amount of uh, space in that one suddenly it turns a uh, impractical coupe into a very practical but still stylish um, estate car and it's in a lovely color as well So with two cylinders, 19 brake horsepower and 600 cc's to play with, this is something called a Lloyd Alexander. Now Lloyd were apparently, and I didn't know this, I'll be honest with you, part of the Borgward group. So the Borgward empire crumbled in, I think, 61 due to the uh, parent company of Borgward, which was involved in other things apart from car production. They made, apparently, something like 176,000 of these in, in Bremen, in uh, northern Germany and I didn't know anything about these. Well, even I am still finding cars today that I have never seen before, and this Lloyd Alexander is one of them. If ever a car deserved a video of its own, it'd have to be a Borgward. So Borgward Isabella ceased production when the company folded in 1961. It's such a pretty car. This one is in, in really great condition. Look how it gleams. I hope the camera's picking this up on the light. It's got some lovely period design features. I bet the boot's actually quite big. Just appears to be a two-seater with a shelf at the back. Inside, it's got those sort of Bakelite type fittings. It's a column gear change. And I guess from any angle, this is an incredibly striking looking coupe absolutely striking so i'm just uh, trying not to trip up there's a number of uh, isabella coupes on the stand and uh, this is this is immense so from 1963 to 66 the roots group uh, commenced a relationship with carosa Touring of milan to produce a custom bodied vehicle based on the humber scepter and this was it uh, they originally planned to produce 
300 of these and eventually this was then reduced to uh, 250. So this, you can see the elements of Humber Scepter that's in the car, but also that Italian custom built body. Here's a, another one. So there's obviously more than the two. You would not, certainly from the rear of the car, mistake that of uh, being anything else that's coming from an Italian styling house. Certainly it's, it, it doesn't give away its Humber Scepter roots very much, except maybe in the front wing. So those peaks on the front wings, I'm not sure how well the styling works at the front, but you can see those front wings how they just arch up. What interesting car, and that's one I must admit before today, I didn't really know much about at all. So thanks again for joining me on Lot 76 Cars at the 2023 Lancaster Classic Motor Show. It's been a great show, some wonderful cars here today. Good to have a chat with some of the owners. Um, so please like, share, subscribe, turn on notifications so to be informed when my next video is live. And once again, thanks for watching.